So how much of a thrill has it been traveling with the one and only last descendant of the great Solomon Co? Is it everything you imagined? <laughs> well, that's a first. I gotta say, it's a relief being with you. So many people hear Co and they expect me to pull some miracle out of a hat. Time has a way of just building on itself. Solomon was a good man. Great one, even. But if he ever heard all the bullshit being talked about him these days, he'd flat out deck him. There's books about him. Lots of them. All right, a couple of high notes. He was one of the first grav jump explorers, back when they had no idea of the dangers. First solo jump out of Soul System, all him. He explored all the planets in Cheyenne and settled Aquila. Plus, he formed the whole Freestar Collective with Voli. So, as you can see, the names got some serious heft. It appears I left him in my other jacket. Sorry. But, really, for some people, it ain't a joke. They have serious expectations. Yeah, there, uh, there was a time well before Korra where it really weighed on me. I felt like every little thing I did or didn't do was a reflection on our great legacy. It's enough to drive you crazy. Now I just hope I can help Cora to... <laughs> I don't know. Your kind words are appreciated. For my father, Cora, and me, everything starts and ends with Solomon Co. He looked out at the stars, and he dreamed a way to get there. Imagine being the first person to jump into a new system, set foot on a new world. Well, I get it. That's powerful stuff. And now... <laughs> I'm just getting sappy. You're a bad influence, you know that? That's what I like about you. Well, I hope the comic book they make about our adventures is better than that rag on Solomon. The stuff they publish is just downright embarrassing. If you want to buy something, I'm sure Amoli can assist you. No, that's it. You got time for a quick chat? I'd appreciate it when you're able. Sorry, I plain forgot what I wanted to talk with you about. Girl, if Cora leaves her tools out one more time, I mean, I love her more than life itself, but I can only say the same damn thing so many times. Oh, next time I see her, I'll paste on a smile and ask her ever so nicely to pick them up again. I mean, this is between me and you, but Cora wasn't exactly planned. I don't know if I mentioned, but I served a spell in the Freestar Rangers. Had a partner, Lillian Hartz. Well, we were like fire and ice, but, uh, well, that wasn't all bad. Well, it wasn't by choice. It was a lousy fit. Maybe someday I'll get into it. I'm just happy I found Constellation. Best damn organization in the settled systems, you ask me. Is it? Shit. Sorry. But what I'm talking about doesn't make sense if you don't, well, know that. Hell, you know, when Cora was born, I was completely out of my depth. For the first few months, I kept thinking what a colossal mistake I made. Me. A father. But one late night, early morning, whatever, little Cora gave me my first smile. And I knew I'd do anything for that girl. Well, Mrs. Lillian Cole was right there with me. And as bad as I had it with nursing at all hours, I know I had it comparatively easy. But that don't mean those first few months were good by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, sure don't feel like it. You said Cora's great. 
And I think so too. But I see so much of myself in her. I've, uh... I've done things I'm not proud of. I <laughs> said things even worse. I try to be better for Cora, but... Is she gonna fall into the same traps? Well, it's bad enough. Let me put it that way. And that's the truth there. I know it seems crazy, towing her across the stars, but I'm not exactly swimming with options here. Her mother... Like I said, another story another time. And what, have her raised by Jacob, my dad? I'd sooner ship her off to Vladimir. You think? Well, she does say the damnedest things. And if she just learned to pick up after herself, she just might live until she's 13. Yeah, sorry if I'm in a lot of it. Didn't get much sleep last night. Lillian and me, I tried talking with her and I lost my cool. Got a little heated. I know I woke Cora up. Well, up until a few years ago, she kept hoping we'd get back together. I mean, Lillian and I stayed married longer than we should have for Cora's sake. But we really weren't doing Cora any favors there. No, no, I'm careful about that. I mean, I try and not put down Lillian with an earshot, which... Well, isn't that hard, really? Ah, Lillian. She's an incredible woman. Truly. But it is always, and I mean always, about the job. When she bleeds, freestyle colors spill out. Back when I was a ranger, we were quite the team. I never had much passion for law enforcement. But there were days I was damn proud to wear the uniform. And other days... Too messy. I mean, we always walk the line well. Lillian is good that way. But some laws I think are horseshit. Ruining lives because some barroom brawl got out of hand. That never sat well with me. I was, too. It's one of the things that kept me going. Longer than I probably should have. But one day... I was just done. No particular reason. It had been... building for a long time. See, so I tried to convince Lillian to leave it behind, come with me. She shot me down. Hard. Hurt my pride. More than a little. But she was probably right. Not for a second. Then she's right. Lillian is where she's meant to be. She always wants to fight the good fight. And the Rangers are lucky to have her. Eh, we were making each other miserable. And that war on poor Cora, too. It's funny, our latest argument started because Lillian thinks I'm putting Cora in too much danger traveling with you. I told her what you told me. That Cora is just blossoming with all this. With Sarah, you, heck, even Walter. I just know Cora has futures I could never dream of. But Lillian, not so much a fan of you. That kind of set me off. Late night stakeouts, shootouts with a lot of leftover adrenaline. Well, we were never lacking in chemistry. Compatibility, on the other hand, Yeah, 
don't be. It's always something. Cora's been stood up a time or two by Lillian. Always for the best reasons. Last time I think, Lillian got a medal for it. But at a certain point, Lillian's excuses don't matter. Poor Cora cried for a week. I don't want to put her through that again. If I do that, you all might want to invest in some industrial strength earplugs. But for now, Lillian's going straight to voicemail. So everyone can sleep easy. <clears throat> you know, the way you handle things, not bad. Not bad. So long. Howdy. You know, traveling with you has been something else. But the best part is when we're charting course for the next jump. I never feel at home planet side. How about you? Well, how non-committal of you. See, the people I don't get are the ones who never go anywhere. They stay in their own hometown, they just live and die there. There is a whole galaxy full of wonder and things you could never imagine. How can they be satisfied with one tiny sliver of it? We ran out of tungsten midway, and the port side weight is 1.03 heavier than starboard. Boss lady wants I mean, right? I think everyone should at least get out once. Go someplace, meet people. Get out of your comfort zone so you can really see that the worlds are more than just little issues and bickering. There is a mess of ugly out there, but man, there is grandeur, too. That helps you understand how this crazy place fits together. I want to be the code that finds something deep out there. Solomon got us here in a big way. I'd like to discover something that moves people. Makes them feel just a bit of what I feel when I jump systems. And not knowing what's next. Exactly. You know, it's funny, as much as Jacob, my dad, cashes in on the family name, he's got no adventure in him. And I get it. It's dangerous, sometimes scary out there. But that's what exploration is. Going off the map and seeing if there truly be dragons. Not one drop. He's always been about making deals, keeping goods moving. Despite his many, many flaws, I think deep down, he is trying to do good for Aquila City. But if you're gonna be name dropping Solomon all the damn time, you should act a little more like him. I couldn't ask for better company. Can you get a moment? Can we talk? I'm up for a little adventure. I don't got many friends, so I figure I gotta level with you. My past keeps showing up. I should get ahead of it before I get behind it. <sighs> Hell, this is tougher than I thought it was gonna be. That, that means a lot. You know, when I turned 18, my dad used one of his many connections to get me my first real job. That, plus the magical co-family name, meant I was shipping freight out of Aquila. There's a way to take the wonder out of space. It was working for that outfit. Every milligram of helium-3 accounted for. Timetables down to the second. Too busy to ever really appreciate anything. Or even look up. <sighs> yeah, that's about the size of it. So, an opportunity comes by from the boss man. He says, run this job, don't ask questions, and there's a bonus. Hell, I was still just a kid. I jumped on it. I knew I wasn't shipping some dried mangoes, but... Suddenly, God help me, it was fun. <laughs> you think? So, uh, more jobs started coming. And everywhere I went, 
Suddenly, dangerous people were much better armed. I'd hear about armed conflicts and civilian casualties. Innocent casualties. And I'd pretend that wasn't me. Maybe I wasn't smuggling weapons. Maybe I was carrying something else. As long as I never open the boxes, I can keep pretending. Soon the boss man's relying on me, and the pay was nice. We also started partying a lot together. Hard. There are whole weeks that are blank. Never had a lick of trouble. <sighs> Till I did. <laughs> At the time, I thought I was the bee's knees. But looking back, a lot of it was dumb luck. I swear my damn name got me out of trouble most of the time. Oh, you're a cold like Solomon? They just waved me through. I had booze enough and drugs enough to never really have to look too hard in the mirror. I knew if I did, I wouldn't like what I saw or where it was going. You're right, of course. To this day, I don't know what I was running that last job. But it was tasty enough, a whole mess of Crimson Fleet jumped me at the rendezvous. Now, a sane man would have been scared. But I looked at my pissant trading skiffs dual cannons and shouted, Oh, this is on! Yeah, I blew up one of the pirates before they realized that I was out of my gourd. I managed to get them down to two left before every system I had was fried. I was done. And that should have been the end. That's when the Rangers showed up. It just felt right. Like this. This is what I was meant to be. And I was young, no care in the world. I thought, <laughs> what, there's only seven of you? I like those odds. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't flinch from living life on the edge a little. Anyway, and then, dependable and straight as an arrow, Lillian Hart came on the calm, and well, it's like hearing the voice of an angel. The Rangers took them out, no problem. All oh, that's fuzzy, though. See, I passed out. And when I came to, Lillian was there. Seems the Rangers were impressed with me. Offered me a job. Yeah, by all rights, it should have been a prison cell, but Lillian, she saw something in me. And I took the job. And that's it. All my cards are on the table. Look, I'm guilty as hell of smuggling who knows what. And there are people I dealt with Bad people that would recognize me. But I swear, I did more questionable stuff for the Rangers, under orders, mind you, than I ever did as a smuggler. Officially, my cargo was destroyed by the fleet. Unofficially, hell yes, she knew. She jettisoned it herself. I don't know why she did it, but she stuck her neck out for me. And after she helped me sober up, and put the mess I was back together. That's, uh... Well, that. But the thing that scares me... is Cora. I mean, I gotta tell her someday. Sometimes the way she looks at me... I'm not worthy of that. But to see that look gone... <sighs> well, ain't that something to look forward to? Just so you know, all this... This is why Lillian is... Something else. And I really need to own that. And have a tough talk with Lillian. Tell her about that follow-through you mentioned. Cora's at an important age right now. Every visit counts. You can't flake on her. Well, for now, let's do something more cheery. Like getting a root canal. I've uh, got 
got some stuff on my mind when you have the time. I remember when I was a deputy, just started to see you around. I, I'd, uh, I'd appreciate your advice. After our last talk, I was really worried what you'd say, but I always feel better. Thank you. Cora's grandpa, good old Jacob, well, he just will not stop pestering me to see Cora, and that's complicated. He is not my favorite topic of conversation. My early years, they uh, weren't good. My mother died when I was seven. Some people have such strong memories from their early life. Me, I mean, I remember her. I have some pictures. I remember the feelings, but just a few clear memories. She banged up her knee real good in an accident. So she went in for knee replacement. It's supposed to be routine, but that damn anesthesiologist dropped the ball. And one day, mom's fine. When the next, doctors take her away. She had these truly ancient cameras like caveman type things. To the room with a red light, she developed pictures she took in this chemical bath. I remember sitting on a stool, looking up at them slowly fading in, and it was like alchemy to me then. And that's all I have, just glimpses like that. Oh, it's all right, it's ancient history. So, Jacob raised me on his own, and shit, maybe I don't give him enough credit. I mean, I know how tough it is, but he was strict, hard. Dad was a longtime civil servant, a big man in governments, and he had a future all laid out for me. Man, could he get his hooks into you. He was scary good at that. At his height, he was some sort of trade minister. A very prominent man in Aquila City. And after I came along, he stepped down to a lower posting. We still had a finger in trade all over the collective. I can't deny it. He sacrificed a lot to be closer to Mom and me. Exactly. If we wanted big, bloated government, we'd head over to the UC. He was my dad, though, when I was a young pup. But I tried. I felt the weight of legacy. I wanted to do him proud. He said I had to learn the business, run some freight, see how credits flow, speak the language. Meanwhile, he's working some angle for a government job for me after. That sounded even more miserable than what I was doing. Oh, I started to. Many, many times. He'd always steer the conversation away or just use logic to dissect every little point. Once I held my ground, and he said I was an ungrateful child, not worthy of what he was doing. I know, right? Even after I was with the Rangers, Dad was just always needling, angling for me to join the government. But by then I knew myself more, and I could stand up to him. And Lillian, while well, she helped. If I let Jacob into Cora's life, he'll dream up some big future for her, and tie her into knots like he did with me. A man could teach a master class in manipulation. I mean, I can't prove it, but I'm pretty sure that freight company was silently partnered with good old dad. And the smuggling? I wouldn't put it past him to be involved. Very involved. He always did a good job of keeping that side of the business hidden from everyone. Especially me. 
Well, no. But he hasn't had much opportunity. And he's a sly one. I'm not sure I'd be able to spot anything. I would try, that's for damn sure. No guaranteeing I'd succeed. I guess I got more to think about. We need to find Cora and talk with her. She made it sound like his life or death. Thanks for grabbing me. Cora wanted something, and I was hoping you could humor her. For me. Cora. Cora. So, what's so important that you needed us? Thank you for talking to me. I got something super important. Something's wrong with Mom. Are you just figuring this out? No. She's in trouble. It's been too long since she's written me. Wait, you read each other? Focus. We need to find Mom. You believe me, right? We were reading the Count of Monte Cristo together, and she hasn't gotten back to me. She's a slow reader, but it's been too long, even for her. She always sends a message when she's finished, but I haven't heard anything. Very serious. Listen, trust me, Lillian Hart is not in trouble. She eradicates trouble. That's her thing. This is not normal. I don't even know where she's stationed, Gumdrop. Dad. She's on Neon. I know this is a whopper of a favor to ask, but there will be no end to this until we see Lillian and clear this all up. Thanks. You being willing to do this, it means a lot. Bring all your guns and armor and stuff. It's going to get serious. Lillian will be at the Ranger Outpost on Neon. That's Jalen uh, Price's office. So, if she's out, he should be able to help. It should be easy. Of course, he's Lillian. Everything will be back to normal. Your ship smells so much better than Dad's. Like, a lot. Too much time trying to stop bad guys here. Whole place just gives me a headache. No funny stuff with that boost pack. Got enough light traffic as it is. Gotta call someone's power kit going out. Welcome back. Listen, feel free to use anything. Wait, is that Sam Coe? You have a lot of nerve. Here to yell at Lillian personally? Maybe change things up a little? Listen, this ain't about me. It's about the kid. Oh, uh, I didn't see you, Princess. Sorry. So why are you here then? Besides him ditching the Rangers to join what was it, Constellation, Lillian Hart is a hell of a Ranger. And every single time she gets a message from him, it just makes her job that much harder. He should just do us all a favor and get out of our lives. I'm sorry. I just can't help you. I'm afraid I cannot disclose that information. You do remember that from your ranger days, Sam. About civilians not being allowed to know sensitive information and all that. It's Cora, right? I just can't say anything. I'm sorry. So, this is official business. Sorry. That's different. 
I haven't heard from Lillian in some time. I know she was working a case, a big one, and was playing it really close to the best. Feel free to search your desk. Maybe there's something there. Sorry, that's all I got. Um, she headed out a few weeks ago. I asked if she needed anything from me. She's really formidable. One lady army type of thing. But I could tell the case was dangerous. Hey, I'm genuinely happy to help you out. Your friend? Not so much. Listen, I've heard a lot of stories about you. If Lily needs an assist, she couldn't ask for anyone better. So good luck. Hopefully, you won't need it. I'm used to someone else riding captain. something. So she had a confidential informant. Huh. An address of Lillian's confidential informant. What's a confidential informant? A snitch. Someone that works for bad people but is helping the authorities on the side. Well, looks like we have a lead. No name, but an address works. Shall we? And the field trip continues. Now be careful, Cora. Dad! You know, Constellation's the first place I'm genuinely proud to be associated with. Not the best neighborhood. Door's locked. Well, yeah. You'd have to be certifiable to leave your door unlocked on Neon. What are you doing? Picking the lock. <laughs> what? Where the hell did you learn to do that? A book. Oh, and Vladimir. Uh, I told you nothing good will come from those books. I can't believe my little Cora is picking locks. Ain't that the truth? But seriously, dragging her all over creation? Uh, maybe Lillian's right. Well, Neon's a rough town. She's waltzing through it like it's nothing. All this hustle and bustle, I know the allure. I fell for it. It's all champagne and pop rocks until the bill comes due. You really think so? I mean, I know you said Constellation's good for her. You really think that, even now? Lock's done. Well, I guess that's our cue. Jesus. Cora. Dad, I've seen one. He's just dead. Yeah, okay. We'll stay away from this. I mean it, Cora. We'll investigate. If that's the CI, does that mean Mom... Mom's as tough as they come. It does mean that whatever she's involved in, uh, it's not some milk run.
Looks like you found it. A slate. What's it say? Shit. Sioka Syndicate. Some Victor compound, some stuff about fake IDs and cover details. Lillian's doing a deep cover up on the Syndicate. Oh, it's bad. The Syndicate is a mean customer. Even the Rangers don't tussle with them unless they have an important reason. <sighs> Lillian, what the hell were you up to? Well, she's got smarts aplenty. <sighs> Cora, listen to me. This is too dangerous. No. The Syndicate is very real and very deadly. There's no way. No, you listen, Dad. I'm not eight anymore. I know I can't shoot or anything. But she's my mom. I can be a pair of eyes. I know things. I will be useful, promise. If mom... And I could have done something about it and didn't... I know that look. Ah, oh, damn it. Yes, do you hear that? It's not just me that's worried about you. I promise. I'll be careful. You'll see. All right. Let's go find your mother. I knew something was wrong, but not like this. from my bag. You're our eyes, okay? You tell us about anything you see. Roger. You move one solitary inch away from that perch, and you will be grounded until you're 30. I am not kidding. This is my deadly serious phase, yeah? I got it. I got it. I won't move. Good. Oh, this has to be the most half-baked idea. Okay, let's make it happen. The Syndicate is bad. So bad. She's got to be okay. Whew, that there is cold.
us, right? Send with love. Goat! You're the new ranger, right? I see the stories about you weren't exaggerated. Thanks. Looks like I get to play hero for once. I gotta say, your timing is spot on. 
My cover was hours from being blown to hell. We have a lot to talk about, but let's get to your ship first. Let's just say you made quite the impression on my daughter. Kinda wish I didn't know so much about you, honestly. Except for any stragglers, yes. By the time they send some reinforcements, we'll be long gone. I did say thanks, right? I'll see you soon. I didn't know what to make of you at first. Oh, thank God, Cora. Are you okay? Are you hurt? I'm fine, Mom. I was so worried about you. I'm fine. You're fine. Everyone's fine. Now it's time for me to kill your dad. No! He tried to keep me away, but I just couldn't. I just couldn't. Oh, I swear, you two are both stubborn as mules. I need to talk to the captain of the ship. I was so worried about Mom. This is your ship, right? I hate to ask, but I'm gonna need some more assistance with my mission. Are you for real? Weren't you just chewing me out about putting Cora at risk? Thanks, Sam. What if you were spotted? Either here or I assume Neon. It means the Syndicate may come after all of you. The only way to get us to be really safe is to see this through. That's fair. Just like Lillian. Straight from one fire to the next. That's the job, Sam. You know that. There's a shipment of armaments coming in on a heavy freighter, the Duma. I know it's itinerary, but I don't know where the arms are being stored. If we find the cash, we can lure out a Sayoka underboss, Valerie Mascara. The worst kind of criminal. She's smart. Too smart. She's convinced a number of the Sayoka to think outside the box. She has plans larger than Neon, and that makes her very dangerous. Yes, what do you think? Well, taking out one ship isn't that bad. And the goal is good. Always is with you, Lillian. As can I. So we get the location of the cache from the Duma. Then we make our move. Thank you. Mom's safe! Thank you, thank you, thank you! Sam has had a lot to say about you. I can't believe you're fine with bringing my daughter along on all your adventures. And encouraging Sam with all this constellation is great for core nonsense? It's dangerous. It's small dog, then? Fine. Nice to meet you as well. So I'm sure Sam's told you all about me. Go on. Ask whatever you want. It's complicated. Oh, so complicated. Cora is the one who reached out to me a couple years ago. We exchanged messages. Then the little scam convinced me to join a book club with her. I mean, books are fine. But the looks I got from my fellow rangers reading Alexander Dumas? <laughs> we do strange things for kids. A confidential informant was supposed to arrange transport off that rock. But I lost contact with him. The Syndicate got to him. And it was only a matter of time before they found me out. I owe you for the assist. He did? That's some serious ancient history. Well, we came across what remained of the pirates that attacked him, and the way he flew, fearless, brave, unpredictable. If there were any contraband on his ship, that would be such a waste of talent. Fortunately, any cargo he had was jettisoned in the fight. Understood? I'm sure we'll talk again.
your engines and prepare for boarding. This is not a request. Excellent. We know where the cache is now. I know the type Valerie uses. It'll be very secure, and if you trip the alarm, it'll send a distress call out. Valerie wants to arm the Syndicate and start preying on all the little outposts and space stations that are far away from Ranger's protection. She's not a pirate. She's an extortionist. And if we let her get her hooks into these people, it could take generations before it's clean. Right now, we have a chance to stop a problem before it starts. We can count on at least one ship being within range. Maybe two. Valerie has more robots than men, so expect hard targets. From what I've seen and heard of you, I feel confident we can do this. It's time we deal with Valerie once and for all. For you, Valerie's cash. I don't know what would have happened. If you fiddle with the cash door, the alarm will go off. So if you want to set up any traps or surprises for the syndicate, do that first. Captain, do you require my assistance? I always wonder when I find a place like this. Fashion secret door. Kind of cool.
advised to remain hostile. It is registered. Take the good stuff. Keep the rest. It's over. I can see why they were eager to recruit you for the Rangers. I can see why Sam speaks so highly of you. We need to talk. I mean, really talk, Lillian. Maybe somewhere private? No, I might need a little... Damn it, emotional support, all right? Thank you. If you want to fight in front of your friend, I'm ready. I know you don't approve of Cora being with me. Don't you see why? If you keep this up, she could get hurt, or killed, or worse. Yeah, but she hasn't. She's been safe. I've been keeping her that way her whole life. And she's not a little girl anymore. She helps keep me alive, too. Hey, back me up here. I'll keep her safe. You know I will, right? I know you try your very best. But what Constellation does? There's so much risk. I don't agree with your decision. I don't think I ever will. But I'll make my peace with it. All right? Listen, all this, this... It has to stop. Like, every time we talk, it makes me want to punch a wall. I don't want to be mad at you. I really don't. Lillian, I don't know if what we had was ever love, but we used to like each other. We need to get back to at least being civil, for Cora's sake. It always feels like you're judging me, Lillian. Like I'm not a good enough dad or good enough partner. And there's all this messy history. I don't think that, Sam. I don't. I know I can hit below the belt. But the way you turn your life around, it's impressive. Truly. I promise I'll try. I can too. <sighs> if we were going to be really honest here, Sam, Cora and you, we were always together, back when we were a team. Cora would follow you everywhere, like a little adoring dog. I just felt out of it, long before we separated. Lillian, I, um... Uh... No, no, Sam. I need to get this out. But it's not fair that I take that out on you. Um... Sorry, all right? It does. But it has been getting better, I think. But it's hard. I know. It's, it's my fault, too. Truce? Truce. But I need something, Sam. I need to see my daughter more. These messages just hurt. They're such a tease. And she misses you. But Lillian, the last three times we planned something, you bailed twice. Twice. Every time you do that, it destroys Cora. And I'm the one that has to deal with it. Maybe we should take it slowly. Try and work up to some visits. That's fair. And Lillian, you know I care for you, right? But you and me? I know. We were over before we even began. 
Look, it's none of my business, I know, but... You need to put yourself out there. And there's bound to be someone, hell, lots of someones, that would be thrilled for the complete Lillian Hart badass ranger package. Actually, I know a certain person on Neon. Oh, stop. <laughs> I'm just saying. There are people that would do right by you. There's more to life than rangering. I'll, I'll think about it. Sam and I didn't really choose to be with each other. It just sort of happened. And then Cora. I admire Sam. And he's one of the few people in the systems that can make me laugh. But I never really was. And I'm certainly not now. You've given both of us a real gift. Like I didn't owe you enough already. Now it's my turn. Sam? You... you're a good dad. I know I don't say it enough, but you are. But there is more to life than being Cora's father. So same advice to you. Find someone. Maybe you already have. Well, aren't you just loving the turnabout and fair play nonsense? See you around, Sam. You're under arrest. So you see why I like her? I mean, we were never a good fit. But Lillian's good people. Well, maybe not the best. I think rather highly of myself. And uh, a few others. <laughs> I, mean, I got a lot to think about. You know, for the first time in ages, I feel good. <laughs> really good. So listen, in Aquila City, there's an old haunt of mine. On a balcony near a good old statue of Solomon Co. I want to show you. And have our own real talk, okay? And maybe figure out a way to repay you. Russia's doing well for herself. Laredo is a big player in arms manufacture. Hey, thanks for coming here with me. You know, I used to truly hate this place. When I was a kid, I'd throw stones at that statue. Just beamed him over and over. <laughs> Almost got arrested for it once. Shopkeep called the ranger over, who chewed me out good. But once he found out I was a co, you just cut me loose. I actually said, you of all people shouldn't do that. And I wanted to shout. I'm the only one who deserves to. <laughs> but I managed to hold my tongue. It was a close one. I can personally attest that the sculptor didn't skimp on the materials. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just the post-mission glow. I, uh, I miss the old guy. Maybe even Aquila City. A little. With all that's gone on, with what we've been through, I finally feel... <laughs> at peace. What happened with Lillian at the end, not pretty. But, we finally know where we stand. Uh, not well. I mean, they'll still be able to mail each other and do vid calls. She just doesn't understand that unless you're the Freestar Collective, Lillian can't be relied upon. Yeah, and without your support, I don't think I ever would have done it. Man, there's so much. But you know, behind every lucky star that's come my way lately, I see, uh... You. I've talked with you about things no one, and I mean no one else knows. Well, your words have been a great comfort. You know, you live long enough, and you can just get covered in garbage. 
from the mistakes, the betrayals, the misfortune, makes it easy to lose sight of the things you should be thankful for. You know what? Yes, yes I am feeling sappy. Just go with it. When we met, originally, and I heard you wanted to travel together, I didn't know what to think. It seemed you waltzed into Constellation so quickly and easily. I thought maybe you were like Walter's bastard kid or ward or something. But, uh, you know, you're pretty amazing. <laughs> Man, I can't believe I just said that. Well, can't argue with that. I just want you to know, come thick or thin, hell or high water, I'm there for you. Every time. So let's go, partner. <laughs> All right, we're in. Let's see what the galaxy throws at us next. <laughs>